All right, chip of the day. Everybody loves chip of the day. So what we have today is some MOVs, MOV, metal oxide varistors. So uh, they're strange devices. Uh, they're everywhere, yet I've kind of ignored them. Uh, they're just kind of those things that are there. I never really designed power supplies and stuff, but I know, I know about them. I sort of know what they do, but I've never really played with them. Um, so uh, I was taking apart an old uh, switching power supply that I didn't want, saving some of the components. Uh, I, I, uh, I guess we'll just go over here. Uh, there were some fats, power fats, and some inductors, some chokes, uh, some a big, big rectifier. So I save I save some things out of it that I know I could use in the future. Um, and uh, I noticed that it had uh, some MOVs in it. So I had a request from a viewer once to take a look at these on a curve tracer. Um, and I certainly haven't done that. It'd be really, really interesting. So what are, what are MOVs? Well, uh, they're a very strange device. So you can think of them as back-to-back -back zener diodes. They're, they're like a zener diode, they break down. They don't do anything until they hit some voltage and then they start conducting. And so they're used to protect your circuits. So this one is a 560 volt uh, device and this one is a 240 volt device. So once the voltage gets greater than 240 volts, this thing starts to conduct. So it's a variable resistor and that variable resistor is dependent on its voltage. I don't really like to think of it that way. I'll, I'll, I'll describe what these, how these things are constructed in the way that I like to think of, what, how I like to think about them. So um, let's see here. Let's take a look at some uh, article here that I found. So that'll help us out. All right, this is the insignia, uh, the, the, the symbol for a, uh, a, a MOV. It looks like a resistor with a funny little line on it. And we'll learn why that line is the shape it is uh, when we put it on the curve tracer. It, look, it looks sort of like that. So this is normally the way that you use them. You could have some circuitry here. You have your AC voltage coming in. And uh, if it gets bigger than say 240 volts, this thing conducts and it shorts everything out and, and protects this. So usually what you do is you put a, um, get a pen here. Usually you have a, uh, a fuse in line, right? So you'll, you'll put a fuse a fuse in line with this thing. So when this thing starts to conduct, it blows the fuse and then everything is okay. Now, if you have little transients, little tiny little glitches, then uh, they won't have enough power to blow the fuse and they'll just get absorbed in the MOV. All right. Here they've used uh, MOV across this AC and then to reference to ground. So that's even fancier. Uh, here they used it as a snubber for an inductive load to protect the uh, switch. And yeah, so different ways to use MOVs. So how are they constructed? Well, they're um, a whole bunch of granular bits of material that are smushed into a ceramic disc, okay? Um, and it's in a sintering process. Sintering is just you press it and you heat it at the same time and you make really, really hard cookies out of these things. Um, now, what you make them out of are these little uh, pellets and you center all these little pellets together. So what are the pellets? Well, they're usually zinc and uh, zinc oxide, little zinc oxide pellets, okay? They can have other chemicals in there as well and they usually do. Um, but the, the, the most basic one is zinc oxide, okay? And so you have these little pellets, okay? And they're all in there. And you smush them together and heat them up and it kind of glues them all together, right? And so they're all, they're all here. Now, zinc oxide, uh, let's see here. Let's take a look at something. All right, I have showed this many times before. Um, semiconductors have four valence electrons, so silicon and germanium, and um, these things have four va valence electrons. If you wanna make something that's different, you can have like a gallium arsenide, and you get a two, and I mean, you get a three and a five together, and that makes a four. Um, 
and you can have like indium oxide you, you can have you you can you can have a gallium phosphide is a blue led so that's a three and a five and those add up to four you could also have twos and sixes so zinc selenide zinc sulfide those are very very uh, common uh, two six compounds that are used in um, uh, vacuum fluorescent displays and stuff, uh, electroluminescent displays, I should say. Zinc selenide is, a, is, a, is common. Cad selenide is also a common one. Um, well, these are zinc oxide, zinc oxide. So here's zinc and here's oxygen. Oxygen's a six, zinc is a two. A two and a six together gives you a four. So zinc and oxygen can make a diode, basically, right? So the way that I like to think of these things is each one is a tiny little diode, okay? And so you have all these little diodes in here and you have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of little diodes all smushed together. And uh, so, you know, 0 0.7 volts, 0 0.7 volts, 0 0.7 volts, you get 100 of them, right? You get up to 70 volts, right? So if you have enough of these little diodes, then you can make a 240 volt device or a 560 volt device, right? So that's the way that I think about that. I think about it as a whole bunch of little diodes all smushed together, right? So uh, what do these things do? Well, they act, like I said, like a back-to-back -back Zener diode. So uh, they go out to, say, 240 volts, and then they start to conduct. Or they go to negative 240 volts, and they start to conduct. They work in either direction. So you have some of the little diodes pointing up, some of the little diodes pointing down, side to side. They're all over the place, right? So I say, let's go put it on the curve tracer and see if we can make these things uh, give us a picture like it is in the book. All right, so I put a device in here and we can bring it up and bring it up and bring it up and whoa, it starts to go funny on me. There we go. Um, so it acts like a diode, okay? It goes out and then it starts to go up. So where is that happening? Well. We have 50 volts per division. So 50, 100, 150, 200, uh, 250, right at 250, it's starting to conduct. So this is a 240 volt device and it's conducting at about 250. All right, so that looks good. Now there's a little bit of looping. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but there's a little bit of separation between the two. So there's a little bit of capacitance in these things as well. So they, they have a little bit of loopiness in it, which is, which is indicative of a capacitor. Now, but we want that picture in that book, right? So let me put it on AC mode and bring it out. And there we go, look at that. Da, 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 da. Just like in the book. Uh, we go up to 250 volts in the forward direction and 250 volts in the reverse direction. Not quite symmetric, but pretty damn close. So there we go. Um, it is what it is. Uh, let's see, let's put this, there we go, make it look real nice. Okay, that's just like the book. <laughs> Perfect. So we're at 100 volts per division. So 100, 200, 250, 100, 200, right. So there you go. So that's the 250 volt, uh, 240 volt device. Let's put in the 560 volt device. Just a second. Put that one in. And uh, let's see here. We will need to change ranges on my machine. And 100, let's change ranges on, there we go. So 200, 300, 400, 500, 550. Oh, look at that, right at 550, it's doing its thing. So yeah, um, truth in advertising. Yeah, this one seems pretty symmetric too. I like this one. So there you go. Um, they are like back-to-back -back Zener diodes, right? They break at a particular voltage and uh, start to conduct. Um, and I'm at a five milliamp scale here, so they're both conducting at 15 milliamps in the forward and backwards direction. And uh, the amount of current that it can handle is basically how much heat it can handle. So the specifications, if you read the data sheets and stuff for, for MOVs, it'll tell you how much power these things can consume, how much, how much current, how much power, that kind of thing. So, but they're mostly for little, little transients um, and uh, they can kill those things. Protect your, protect your valuable electronics. 
All right, it says choosing the right mob for protection. Uh, choose the maximum working voltage. Choose the clamping voltage. Uh, choose the surge current. Uh, energy absorption, response time, maximum AC, maximum leakage current that you can handle. So if you, if you want to use these uh, devices, you know, get the data sheets. They're kind of brain dead devices. They're really easy just to pop into your circuit and not worry too much about them. Um, you can just, I don't think they're very cheap though. So yeah, you use them wisely. All right, there you go. Chip of the day. Uh, MOVs, metal oxide varistors.